Hey, what's up y'all? This is another behind the scenes video. Today I'm getting ready to do a teaching or start on writing a teaching for first five. And I just kind of wanted to walk you through the process that I use to do it. The first thing I like to do when I get an assignment is to read the chapter I have to teach over and over just to see um, if I'm familiar with it already and just kind of get a feel for what's being said. From my previous studies, I recognized this psalm as a psalm when David was struggling with hidden sin and he was just praying out and asking God to forgive him and to not abandon him. So this is a really good one. I mean, all of them are good. Another thing I like to do is to check and compare the versions uh, of the scripture. It just helps. The, sometimes when the wording is different or something said a different way, it just helps me to pick up on a point that I may not have caught otherwise. Hey y'all, this is step one. Continue, continue. So after I read it, I try to make observations about what I see. I don't jump to application just yet, but I just kind of write down what I'm seeing and my thoughts about it. It's good that I read it like a million times too because it took me like <laughs> three versions in to realize that the psalmist was actually like for real sick. He wasn't just making up like flowery language um, in, the th in the song. So the next thing I do is look at the context of the passage that I'm reading. Here in this study bubble that I have, there are kind of uh, summaries of the book that give the historical context, the background, all that good stuff right here. So again, I study the context by checking out the summaries in the beginning of my study Bible at the beginning of the book. But you can also find, depending on the passage you read, you'll see little cu cultural things that are different from our culture. This guy right here is also my best friend when I'm studying. If I find a cultural event going wrong inside of a text or just something that's unfamiliar in our own culture, I just look that thing up in this Zondervan Bible Dictionary. So going back to the passages I'm studying, studying the context um, of this passage, I found out that it is a penitential psalm, which is basically a psalm where the psalm, the psalmist confesses sin and asks for God's mercy also. And I also figured out that the purpose of the psalm was for memorial purposes. So this is either because David is making a prayer and he wants to remind God of his situation to get God to act, or he wants the people of God to remember. He wants them to remember how they should act when they're in a similar situation, how they should pray to the Lord. One more thing I like to do in the context section of my study is that I like to get into commentaries to see like different perspectives from other Bible teachers and what they pull out from the text. So obviously after looking at all that research and stuff, I'm kind of like feeling like I've drunk in from a water hose. So I need to kind of let it sit and then kind of disseminate it all in a way that I can kind of organize and understand in my mind. Alright, so continuing with behind the scenes of how I do Bible study, how I write first five teachings. This is step three continued. It's the next day. I've given myself time to reflect on what I researched and now I've organized it in different ways that helps me understand. All right, so I'm just going to show you a couple ways that I have kind of put down this information so I can understand it. First off, I kind of wrote the emotions that David is going through in this song. I made this little picture to kind of show what David's situation is looking like. He's feeling this physical sickness, this spiritual sickness, and the attack of his enemies because of his sin and his situation. He feels abandoned. And so he, uh, with a penitent heart, cries out to God, hurry up and help me. You know, he, he repents for his sin, and he's like, God, hurry up and help me, please. <laughs> and so now that I've done that, the next step is figuring out or just getting down on a piece of paper in a sentence what the original message to the original audience was. And I believe that it's this, that only a penitent heart can receive God's relieving presence in the midst of God's discipline. So repentance first and then relief comes so you repent and then you start to experience the relief that comes from god's presence so david experiences his weakness confesses his sin he confesses and repents for his sin and pleads for god to hurry up and intervene in his situation the next step is to figure out 
so okay how much of this message or how much of this passage can apply to us and just kind of going through what the context is what the situation is i believe like this whole message really applies to us just be aware that sometimes the context of the original passage doesn't really suit our situation today for example they might be uh the biblical audience might be going to fight a war or it might have some cultural ties so just be aware